Hello, mashed potato lovers. Uh, you guys had awesome suggestions for mix-ins. I love the garlic powder, the cream cheese. People are talking about making um, dirty mashed potatoes, which I'd never heard of before or, or called that, where they're just kind of mashed really lightly and skins are on. Uh, they all sound really, really good to me. Uh, and I, so I just wanted to answer a few questions that you had out there. And the first one was about, uh, do you have to use russets when you make mashed potatoes? And some people were saying that they're like Yukon Golds. And I think maybe I wasn't totally clear in the video, but uh, I was basically saying if, if a potato crumbles the way that the Yukon Gold and the Russet do, then it's gonna be really nice for mashed potatoes, meaning it's gonna absorb a lot of flavorful liquid. So that's awesome. So both of those are, are fantastic. And we have recipes on Cook's Illustrated for um, using both Russets and Yukon Golds. Um, I, I like them both a lot. Yukon Golds won't absorb quite as much, but they have a nice butteriness to themselves anyway. So I, I think they're really nice. They also have thinner skins than russets. So for those of you who kind of like that um, uh, that that kind of mashed dirty style, uh, I would I would tend to go for Yukon Golds over russets for that. But obviously, it's personal preference. Whatever you like, you like, and and I think that's awesome. Next question up was uh, kind of alternative cooking methods. So someone mentioned that they see a lot of recipes where folks are roasting the potatoes uh, whole in their jackets, then peeling them and working with those. And other people suggested um, steaming the slices as opposed to uh, boiling them. And so both of those methods work. And we have a really old recipe that bakes the potato before doing it. And we have a, a slightly newer recipe that uses Yukon Gold cubes and we actually steam them in a colander. Uh, we rinse them halfway through that process to rinse off a bunch of the excess starch so that they're a lot lighter. So both of those methods absolutely work. I tend to go for the boiling method because you get a lot of nice seasoning on the potato. Obviously you can season after the fact because it's mashed, but um, it, you can season them. It's really fast um, and, and so I tend to go that way. But both those other methods definitely work um, with some caveats. So for the roasted ones, um, it's gonna take longer than it would if you're boiling it. Uh, and then after the fact, you wanna peel them while they're still hot. And so that you, know, you can let them cool down before you peel them, which would make it easier to peel. But you wanna work with potatoes when they're warm and you wanna keep them warm all the way through serving time. As starches start to cool down, they retrograde, um, they form kind of crystals that even if you heat them back up, you'll never get mashed potatoes to quite the same point um, as when they're hot. So you really do want to peel them hot. That can be annoying for a lot of people. They don't want to do that. So a lot of times um, we go with cut potatoes that are boiled over whole ones um, that are either boiled or roasted. So that's the downside there. Um, steaming, again, it totally works. We have, we have a nice method that does that. It's probably gonna take a little bit longer and you wanna make sure that you have enough space in your, uh, in your pot so that everything is getting contacted by that um, steam. You don't want it to be too densely packed or you're gonna kind of cook the stuff on the outside but the inside, inside won't. Um, but we have a great recipe on cooksillustrate.com for, um, for a Yukon Gold potato that is steamed. So uh, I think it's called fluffy mashed potatoes. So you can check that out. Uh, so I, I, I got a question, a, a very brief question from Chief Greenhills, uh, asked, cream, milk, what up? And, um, and I realized in the video we don't actually show uh, or, or talk very much about the liquid that I am adding to it. So I mentioned that you add the butter first, which coats all of those starch granules, which is great. Um, it's gonna help prevent gluiness, but then the liquid that I do add in, and specifically in that recipe, is a little bit of half and half. Um, milk, if you want something that's a little bit leaner, you can go cream if you're looking for something really indulgent, but half and half is a nice kind of sweet spot for mashed potatoes. Um, it adds some, uh, obviously some moisture so that it thins out the potatoes. You have something that flows a little bit nicer, um, and they're richer, uh, they're richer for it having added that, that half and half. So that, that's my go-to there, and there is liquid in those. So I also got another question that was very specific um, at 4.11 in the video, which is where I'm talking about you don't need to boil potatoes. All of these reactions happen at temperatures well below the boiling point. Someone was asking what temperature specifically. And so we're looking for something around 190 degrees, but it could be up to 200 degrees and even as low as about 185. The point is that if it's simmering, you see little bubbles, you're in good shape. You don't need to pull out your thermometer for that. Uh, but basically over 185 degrees, you'll see pectin breakdown and, and starch gelling will be happening. So um, you know, anywhere you have a little bit of bubbles but not violent bubbles, you're in good shape. And so the final question I wanted to get into was uh, the purple, blue kind of novelty potatoes that you see at the supermarket. Uh, and the question was whether those are good for mashing or not. 
So, uh, you know, those potatoes, they can be a range of different, um, different types and have different qualities to them. But generally speaking, they live in the lower starch, higher moisture group. So they're a lot more like a red bliss potato than they are a russet potato. So can you mash them? Absolutely. You can mash, you know, red bliss potatoes. People do it all the time. Is it going to give you that really fluffy mash that you can then get tons of rich, uh, rich ingredients into? Probably not. Um, so for a lot of times when we work with those kind of potatoes, we like them simply boiled, drizzled with some olive oil and salt, or, or even cut in half and then roasted uh, the way you would with, say, fingerling potatoes. So that'd be my recommendation there. Uh, so anyway, that's all I have time for today. Thank you guys so much for all of your awesome comments. Uh, I can tell that you're big potato fans, and I hope your Thanksgiving tables are full of potatoes. Other stuff too, but I hope you make tons of mashed potatoes um, and have a really great holiday and stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks.